um, finder on. Um, but uh, if I can find How much that. gas did he have? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So, no. I, um, he, he's a skeptic. I can't find. Uh, I can't remember his name. I can't find it here. But so it was on the Discovery Channel. They had the Discovery Channel come and film this guy, and uh, they get in a boat. They get on like Simcoe. They put the fish finder on. And the Discovery Channel's filming it, and, and they, they finish the tour, and they go, no, no, no monster here. <laughs> uh, like, uh, is, is Chemical Kelly supposed to pop its head up and go, hey, Discovery Channel's here. Like, <laughs> I, I want to be filmed, you know? Uh, but, so uh, finally, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain um, how it's been able to last for so many centuries. Um, in the 1970s, and this was told to me covertly, uh, I've never reported it, um, but there was a, a crew out on Kempenfelt Bay testing the lake's bottom before going ahead with the building of a permanent dock. Now after about 10 minutes testing on the lake's bottom, Remember, this was in the 70s. All of a sudden, there was a huge swirl of water. And, and what came up, what the crew saw that they told me was, it puzzled the hell out of them, were all these little, like, what seemed like little, small salamanders. But they were, there were four of them with appendages, and all about one foot in length, these, these salamander-looking creatures. Um, and they came from the depths and we're swimming on the surface of Lake Simcoe. Now obviously their spawning habitat had been disturbed. Um, they were not lake trout, they said. They weren't whitefish, even musky, sturgeon, or pike. And they looked so alien to them, uh, like nothing they'd ever seen before. Uh, and, and, and using uh, the, the, the old 70s vernacular, uh, it freaked them out. Uh, and they never really told anybody about it after. I mean, it came out years later. Um, so, to me, that tells a story how Simcoe Sam can reproduce as it has over the centuries. And following this thought, there must be more than one of these monsters in Lake Simcoe. Um, so not only is there something strange, and unexplained in the lake, but there's definitely more than one of these creatures. Um, you know. Uh, th anyways, that's that's my finding. Um, and if I can just find where that is, um, I have a lot more here that I could get a lot more. Um, uh, reports of the monster. They're in my book out there, if, you, if you're interested in, in purchasing my book. And my good friend Bruce Roach is out there. He's, he's got some uh, games. He's come up with paranormal games. And also t-shirts that Bruce and I came up with that basically say, uh, they're kind of a, a, a novelty. I swam with the monster. I mean, if you're interested in, in taking home something from tonight. Um, I thought I'd mention that. I also uh, really wanted to thank uh, Linda and the Georgina Paranormal Society um, for even having me uh, tonight. Um, it, it, you know, it, it's not a common topic uh, to talk about a monster in Lake Simcoe. Because, uh, you know, a lot of people just don't believe it, but I can, I can tell you that um, even when I was on TV, thanks to Linda on Georgina Life, on, on Rogers Georgina, and, and I had about five and a half minutes to talk about um, UFOs over Lake Simcoe. Um, uh, they put it on YouTube, and, and I just looked at, at myself today, real vain, eh? <laughs> and it's, it's almost at 1,200 views. 
of, of less than five minutes on UFOs over Lake Simcoe. I'm like, no, who the hell wants to see me? You know, I'm just some old geezer. Um, let me, I just want to, yeah, I, I've got a lot more. Yeah, even even uh, Bruce Bruce Roach out here, uh, he's on Jackson's Point. Uh, as I said, he contacted me after Lake Simcoe Living. Uh, did an art, I did an article for them on the monster for their 10th anniversary, um, and they published it. It garnered a lot of response, and Bruce contacted me. And, and his citing, based, I quote, it was the fall of 2016. On my after dinner walk at 6:30 p.m., I was walking back home east on Pinery Lane in Jackson's Point when I spotted a lar long, large stovepipe black object sticking out of the water just beyond the cement fire dock. Now this is quite a distance from me, but I began running down the gravel access laneway to the dock, trying to set up my cell phone to video the creature. Luckily, it was not moving very fast at all, and I was able to estimate its neck to be about a foot wide. It looked to be about two and a half to three feet out of the water and moving very smoothly toward Bonnie Boats. Now, as Bruce reported that the sun was in the wrong position, and as we all know, um, if, if, you're, if, you're, if the sun is coming right at you, you're, you're, you're not going to get anything. Um, and uh, uh, there, there is a fishing website, um, I think it's, uh, what is it, Lake Simcoe Fishing, something like that. Uh, so the, these, uh, these fishermen reported, uh, we were fishing in 30 feet of water, let's just say we could see close to bottom and we were fishing perch and pipe. Next thing we know, the whole bottom was filled with a giant black mass. Both our rods were screeching like crazy and snapped. We both looked at each other in disbelief and we never spoke of that moment again. Uh, and that's a, that's a common thread uh, even for years back in the 70s when I first was what, hired at the era. Uh, a common thread in these sightings. Um, Okay, so, um, yeah, and, and I, I did want to touch just briefly on, on UFOs if I could. Um, uh, my wife and I used to have a cottage in Willow Beach. I mean, I love Georgina. I, I, I basically, whenever I could, I came to work up here. Um, you know, I mean, for 20 years I did the reviews of the plays at the Red Barn. I mean, what a fantastic venue the Red Barn was, unbelievable. Um, you know, I knew the people at the Briars. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, so we had a cottage at Willow Beach, and, and you know, uh, as I just said, I, uh, Linda had uh, got me on, Georgino Life on Rogers, talked about UFOs, all the, all the views I've had. But, you know, um, this area is a real hot spot uh, for UFO uh, sightings. I could talk a whole other time about that. Um, maybe Linda will have me back oh, sometime. Keep talking. You've got time. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, even today, uh, I can tell you that there's a woman uh, just outside Sutton where her neighbors have have been complaining uh, about these lights all night being on in her house, mm -hmm. and and she's getting up in the morning and going. I don't have lights on, and uh, well, so you know she set up cameras. Well, you're not going to believe it. Maybe I'm going way out there, but the cameras are showing the lights are coming from the sky over her house. No. So, I mean that that's a whole other conversation with me. Uh, I'm really glad to have such a good turnout tonight. And, and like I said, I, I thank the Georgina Paranormal Society for having me. Um, but like, uh, where was I? Oh yeah, that, uh, 
the, 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 the only good picture of Loch Ness has Urquhart Castle in the foreground. That's that's my family castle. The castle's falling down, of course. Yes. Um, yeah, it didn't maintain it. <laughs> but it's the only good picture of Nessie, and Nessie's about in the middle of Loch Ness, and it was a physician traveling on the road uh, right in, in front of Urquhart Castle when he snapped this. Um, and it's really the only picture of Nessie, or any quality picture, um, and it stands to this day. And, and, and look at, like I said, it's drawing like all these tourist dollars every year. I mean, if anybody's going to Scotland, they're going to go to Loch Ness too, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and, and like I said, Loch Ness, they've used sonars, high-tech submarines, submersible microphones, uh, but there's no concrete evidence that Loch Ness, uh, or if I can say this, Mesoratius Ramabutra, <laughs> no, I can't say it. <laughs> I can't say it. Maybe some Latin guy can. Um, but, uh, Oh, there, there, the, the Discovery Channel. The guy's name was, was Joe Nickel, a known skeptic, and he was with Ben Radford, who probably many of you have heard. Uh, they visited Lake Simcoe in, in 2005, took a boat ride around Lake Simcoe with their fish finder going, and at the end, uh, and I quote, there's no monster in Lake Simcoe. I mean, this is total moose dung in my mind. <laughs> uh, I mean, where, where are all these sightings coming from, and how could they possibly conclude there is no Lake Simcoe monster from a simple afternoon boat ride? Because the monster would stay in one spot for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't say what kind of boat they were in, you know. And also a fish finder has a range of what? 20 feet on each side. Yeah, and, 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 and how went, big... And they went all the way around the lake. <laughs> yeah, and, and my friend Bruce, if you go on our website, he's, he's got all the information on Lake Simcoe, the, how big it is, the size, everything's there. I mean, check out the website. Um, like I said, how much gas did they have? <laughs> it wasn't gas. I think they were drinking beer. <laughs> um, you can have gas afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, um, Linda's all right if I wrap up? Oh, if you want to, but you can continue. Uh, I was going to try to go to eight, but um, those are the major points I wanted to make. I still want to hear about the lights over the house. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> she won't take no for me. Well, that what the, was just mean, though. No, what the, what the camera caught was some kind of ship high in the sky with the lights beaming down on this house. Um, and uh, it's not the only uh, time this has happened um, in, in my investigations of uh, UFOs in Georgina. As I said on Rogers, um, for some strange reason, uh, UFOs like to suck water out of Lake Simcoe, preferably at night. And if you see them, they'll be there. The lights will be on the water, and they'll be sucking in the water. Like, I don't know, maybe they all got hot tubs on their floor. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't do it during the day. They'd get caught. <laughs> well, no, I mean, uh, there were Willow Beach cottagers. I think it was in the 80s. Uh, not far from where, where my wife and I had a cottage, where uh, they, were, they, were, they, were, they were a family from Whitby, and the husband was outside uh, looking at, with the grass or something, and he saw this, this ship just come down the road, quiet, didn't, didn't make a noise, and he kind of stood there and went, what, what? You know, kind of freaked out and called the, his family out. It's recorded, I mean, the era reported it, and uh, yeah, there were five of them uh, that have a cottage in Willow Beach from Whitby that saw this UFO just 
gradually go down the road and go out over Lake Simcoe, and it was during the day. So, I mean, where are things have happened? <laughs> Anyways, um, that wraps up the major points I wanted to make on the Log Simple Monster. Uh, I hope you've learned something from my talk tonight. Uh, and if you live around Lake Simcoe, uh, keep a watchful, watchful eye for two humps swimming in the water. That just can't be explained. <laughs> but I've never swimming on my back. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, but thanks so much for coming out to the Georgina Paranormal Society lecture series and listening to me tonight. Before I sign off, I just want to thank uh, my friend uh, Bruce Roach who's out there for coming, and my good friend Elaine Moyle, who's with my books and some novelty t-shirts, uh, my wife for filming me for posterity, um, uh, the tape's probably all going to be full of her laughing anyway, so. um, and, but, and, 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 and of course Forrest and Taylor Funeral Home for hosting us. You know, because it's always hard for people to meet uh, without having to spend an arm and a leg. So I appreciate that. Uh, and, and of course, I can't say enough about Linda Corradino. I mean, I, I, I've been on Georgina Life now three times, um, and her group, uh, highly respected. I mean, if you've got ghosts in the closet, Call these people. They aren't. They aren't Dan Aykroyd and Bill Murray running around. Yeah, you know, like, they are the real McCoy. Uh, Linda said, uh, "You know, we have got the equipment, uh, but sometimes ghosts can play with it." Well, don't believe her. I mean, if you, if, if there's some kind of apparition, uh, something that unexplained, this crew can find it. Believe me. Um, yeah, so thanks, Linda. Um, and uh, maybe, just maybe, you might see something unexplained in Lake Simcoe. So thanks. Uh, are we going to have a brief break? Yeah, we can have a break and then come back and ask questions. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.